All right, welcome everybody to another episode of This Week I'm Learning. Uh, today we're joined by Charlie Stifler, also known as Mjolnir, Cody Stratman, as always, Psycho Nitrous, and then over there, because we've done this a few times now, Colton Roper, Seeker4761. Uh, today is Thursday, July 16th, in the year that will not fucking end, uh, 2020. Uh, yeah, but it should be an interesting episode, especially since uh, Colton is going to tell us that 2020 is not the worst year ever, at least according to the scientists. And apparently... You, the... You've got some convincing to do. You, I will make an excellent <laughs> case for that. We'll see. Okay. We'll see. <laughs> And the desolation update is not fit for every man. man and who's going to no, tell no. us about is. that? Oh, <laughs> is, is, fit. is fit for every man. And I can't read, apparently. So that's also in the news. <laughs> we'll explain that, too. So, well, yeah. hopefully Cody can read, because he'll be talking to us about a certain world that is getting a new state and sooner than expected. I don't even know what to think to make okay. of that, honestly. I've I've seen that for a while. Yeah. And I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? So I'm I'm very curious about that. And then our special guest Charlie will be telling us about uh, how pharmaceutical companies don't have to rule the world if we don't let them. Sort of related to 2020, I'm sure, in some way. Yeah. <laughs> the best time. The worst. All right. This, well. This worst timeline. Yeah. Colton, <laughs> take us away. Give us some hope. <laughs> Give us some hope, man. Well, need some, need some hope. So, as as you guys know, 2020 has been rough. Uh, pretty much, I would say it was a, it's a, it's a down year, just a little bit. Um, but as I said, uh, scientists have actually determined what is the worst year in all of history. What it, What's the worst year to be a human being in all of history? Now, the question I have for you guys, I'll let you each guess what do you guys think would be the worst one cody we're gonna start with you what do you think is the worst year in all of recorded human history i'm gonna say it's uh around the time of the black plague um that's I, a very good guess i forget precise what was that the like 1300s god yeah i'm failing specifically my 13 right around 1340 1350 is a, considered a, a very bad bad set of years. Okay. Brandon, what do you think? And you can say the Black uh, Plague again. If you really, those are pretty bad. I mean, no, 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 no. Yeah, that, I took the easy guess. one. That, so, that sorry. was. Yeah. Uh, let's let's go World War One trench warfare, terrible medicine. Add in the Spanish flu. 1918. Yep. I would argue that's a pretty bad year. Yeah, I mean, that's a bad year. Unfortunately, due to our current situation, we are very aware of the 1918 Spanish flu pandemic. I mean, I've a I lot have, about that. Yep. I have been in trench warfare with my neighbor over the last two months, so. <laughs> 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 Gotta invade that sucker. <laughs> that's a good guess. What about you, Charlie? Does it is it specifically human history or just history Re recorded history so i would argue yes human okay, what is human the worst history. time to be a human all the way back to in the jedi years oh well that's a long long time ago in a galaxy far far away so but, far away uh i would go somewhere in the 4000 bc range during one of the egyptian plagues hmm. so all of you guys mentioned disease that's interesting you're only you're all wrong. Warfare. But it was but it was very yeah, warfare too. You it's know kind of on the mind right now. Twenty <laughs> <laughs> uh, twenty. But as I said all of you guys are considered wrong. All they are, all of those are I would argue, like according to these scientists, are all in the top ten. Uh Woo! Black, the worst the worst year of the bubonic plague during the Middle Ages was roughly like thirteen forty seven. That was when during one seventh month period, 200 million people died or something ridiculous in Europe and who knows everywhere else around the world. Uh, Spanish flu, 20 million people, something ridiculous like that. Charlie, does that sound about right? Yeah. Yeah, something something stupid like that over a two-year period. Uh, and you know what? 4,000 BC, I would argue that probably wasn't the best time. I mean, long time <laughs> ago, definitely the plagues. There's still 
It wasn't a lot of uh, social programs back in those days, I would argue. <laughs> but... <laughs> We're going to let you not lift a giant brick for two hours. (laughs) Congratulations. That's our welfare program. Enjoy. (laughs) There's your vacation (laughs) for your lifetime. Used up. But according to professors at Harvard, uh, they have uh, historical professors. They have stated that the year 536 AD is objectively and empirically the worst year to be alive for for a human being. Okay. So that is smack dab in the middle of the Dark Ages. Not the Middle Ages. This is the dark side of the Middle, of the middle Ages. So this is, this is the time right after uh, the Roman Empire fell when that stabilizing force was gone. So there was warfare, as Brandon kind of mentioned, warfare all over Europe. Thousands and hundreds of thousands of people dying just constant in constant fighting that lasted generations. Um, but what's specifically bad about the year 536 is historical, a uh, little bit of context. So historical documents from uh, Ireland, England, uh, in that area, state that there was a terrible fog that uh, just descended over, over Europe. Uh, this is corroborated. Also, it happened in the Middle East. It happened in parts of Asia as well. Uh, historical documents all over saying just for years at a time, it was just dark. Um, <laughs> Basically, so hmm. right around the early, they, they think it was around early 536. Uh, like I said, that, the darkness happened. Uh, snow was falling year round in China. Uh, basically in Ireland, there was another thing where there was literally no bread. Not just some bread. There was literally no bread due to crops failing. Hmm. Famine, famine all over the world, um, and so on and so forth. And the cause of it was actually, they, they think it was a... Uh, not a super volcano, but a volcano either in Iceland or in El Salvador, and they were able to they were able to find this out using the tree ring reading techniques. They saw that the years between 536 and 539 were about two degrees Celsius colder than average. Uh, so growth uh, for plant life was basically non-existent according to this, and they also used hypersensitive ice cores that were able to to determine that there's a lot of, uh, well, volcanic ash in the atmosphere. Um, but what's also kind of cool, they are also able to determine, they also used, um, I think they were able to ter- determine that the lead content in in the atmosphere was at an all-time low as well, which means is indicative of the economy of 536 just shutting down because there was no, no smelting, no fires were, no like community fires, no stuff like that. It's really, really kind of cool, high 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 per se stuff um so that hundreds of thousands of people died um like i said there was crops crop failures all over the world the economy was beyond shut down it was it was non-existent it was it was setting back humanity hundreds of years and this is actually 536 was actually the start of about a hundred years of just constant shit so we we like to think in our current year 2020 that it's just been a hundred years of just crap but literally in 536 <laughs> it was just been just literal constant poop. literal little bubonic plague of the uh the plague of justinian uh when the was the western roman empire eastern roman empire was trying to rebuild uh killed millions of their of their citizens um just god awful so that's what i learned um, gives you a little hope that even though this year has been a shit show, just like every other year, looking back when I was researching this, I kind of found an uh, article saying that, oh, 2015 is the worst year ever. Ah, when will 2018 actually end? The worst year ever. Turns out <laughs> none of those are right. 536 AD, world was gone. So yeah, that's, that's, that's what a- I... Yeah, so I have I have a few thoughts about this. Like my first thought is very sci-fi that I I can't wait until we get like faster than light travel so we can fly away from Earth and then look back at history yeah. to see like what happened, like who caused COVID? Oh, it was Elvis in Africa. <laughs> we knew it all along. National Enquirer was right. It- Cody, it was 5G. There we was all know a it's gun true. Oh, that is what this podcast is about, is finding the truth about 5G. <laughs> Burn all the 5G towers, guys. 
all the real ones. Please, please which don't. there aren't please any don't. real ones right now because five G actually has it been. Yeah, pretty terrible. Oh Gosh. my god. Uh, yeah. The <laughs> other thought that I had is kind of a more realist thought is that it's intangible to us. So. I am the oldest one here at 35, which means my history goes back to 1985. So anything before 1985 might as well been 4000 BC to me. I know that the history, like I have a knowledge that, that exists, but that's not actually tangible to me. The, fall, the Berlin Wall falling, that's tangible to me, even though I was four years old. It's still See, and tangible. I have no concept of that. That yeah. is, may as well be ancient history to me, being the youngest yeah. one here. Precisely. And, and that has both <laughs> positive... Youngest one here. <laughs> yeah. Mm. <laughs> Thanks. Well, so, so there's also an interesting uh, theory that posits that you can't actually tell, even in your own historical timeline, like when you actually began. Who's to say that the memories that we, you know, I mean, this hmm. is super far out there. But who's to say the memories that we do have are actually real? I mean, it's all the matrix. You could dude. say that, yeah. It, <laughs> they're all the matrix. Uh, it's all a simulation. Uh, yeah, matrix but has I, a bug. In I, it. I do get yeah. what you mean about events happening in the past because you don't have that personal link to it. You you don't have the the actual memories that you can you can empathize to a certain extent like with your parents and even with your grandparents. And if, if you're really lucky enough to have, you know, great grandparents growing up that you could maybe even some of them because of them retelling it and stuff like that, you could almost feel tangible knowledge about that. But you're not going to talk yeah. to somebody from, you know, 536 and be like, Hey man, you need a hug. Like, <laughs> not right now, of course, but, you know, after so, there's a vaccine, you need a hug. <laughs> after about 100 years. I'm sure you understand. I, just a little little elbow there. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> man. It's okay, you know? Peasant, social distance. Wear that plague mask. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> We're finally living in a time where a plague mask is actually appropriate. Uh, oh, I didn't even think. Yeah, you see, I've I've actually seen some people wearing those around Tucson. It's actually pretty freaking hilarious. It's and it's technically not. At least they're wearing a mask. I mean, it's a right. bit of a troll, but shit. Yeah, no, that's fine. There it's are people that cover. aren't people. So shit. Yeah, I was joking with Esther that uh, this year for Halloween I wanted to be a plague doctor, and I feel like that's going to go but pretty said no. You know, it's going to be pretty relevant this year. Halloween is actually probably the best holiday. Well, except it, for the it candy. It might actually be the only oh, one shit, you can you're... celebrate. Yeah. Except I for the candy. The candy's kind of problematic like getting candy and sanitized candy from somebody. But I guess they're in the right way. Like Why, you not if it's properly packaged cuz then you can decontaminate the external container before consuming. See, I've Halloween also found, like, proven is Twitter the best holiday. I've also found like <laughs> posts of people in thinking about inventing like little catapults, tiny little catapults. They can put the candy in yes. and then shoot the kids. Yes, a little. See, gun to shoot see again, just another years. reference to medieval times that humanity is just a big circle and we never improve. So I don't know. I mean, all I'm saying is it makes a lot of sense that all of Renaissance art is overweight people naked at home. <laughs> I'm not even wearing pants right now, so it kind of makes sense. <laughs> I'm wearing shorts. They're not cool. Sure you are. We have no shorts. proof of that, so. <laughs> I don't want to see, though, Cody. <laughs> you guys don't want to see me either. We're all good. No. Let's, we'll we'll uh, stay safe. We'll, we'll get our Pornhub account set up soon. Don't you worry. <laughs> As I've said, this week tonight, after dark. Not this week tonight. That's oh. the different thing. This week I'm learning. Is that a totally different thing? Fucked up that. <laughs> After hours. Mm, 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 mm. I need eye bleach. <laughs> Even better. I'll just take these off. Uh, <laughs> Whatever. I can't see. <laughs> You're a beautiful blur. You're already blurred out. It's fine. Uh, God, this is this is our lifetime. So, uh, 
Wait, Colton, there was something that we were talking about before that I forgot that you were like, hey, talk about this in the podcast during my section. And now I don't remember what it was that we were talking about. Was it travel based? Well, I huh. mean, so you're going to, what are you going to talk to us about, Cody? Certain what? world is getting a new state. No, no, no. I'm not, I'm not there yet. Well, oh, you're not? No. Well, I'm, well shit, go next. Why not? You know what? I, well, fine. <laughs> Screw okay. the format. Fuck yeah, it. we don't need Go a next. format. Screw the order. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was... What format? That was that. actually... <laughs> <laughs> to the death of the format. <laughs> anyway, so Colton was actually correct. Uh, that it is actually travel-based. So, me being travel, Alaska Airlines is going to join One World. And possibly sooner than uh, expected. So One World is one of the three major airline alliances. So far, Alaska Airlines has been its own kind of quasi-alliance with a bunch of different partners. Uh, so if you look at airlines and how they cooperate with each other, there's a few different ways. Uh, the first way is um, interline agreements, which basically means, hey, I can buy a ticket from... Um, Anchorage, and I can go to all the way to El Salvador or wherever to see that volcano that blew up in uh, 536 AD. Ha have they invented faster than light travel is what you're saying. <laughs> yes, it turns out that every airline is going to be Alaska Airlines in <laughs> five years. They're, they're just posing Greatest for this. Now. They're like, they're yes. They're going to win the franchise wars. Got it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, they're going to be the Taco Bell of airlines. <laughs> Except for that, that would actually <laughs> probably be spirit. Anyway, dig it, uh, spirit. Why? Uh, they, they're cheap. They, they get you there. Like 80% of the time, they get you there every time. <laughs> every landing got, is a good that, landing. That leads into my topic. I'll take those out. odds. I'm just saying I'll take those odds. But <laughs> uh, So you've got uh, the interline agreements, which are basically, hey, you and your baggage can – Book a ticket that actually includes multiple airlines and will allow you to do that. And you can transfer from one airline to the other and your baggage can too. That way you don't have a book a ticket and go from, you know, Anchorage to Seattle and then re-exit security, get your bags, go back, check in your bags and then fly on LATAM or something to get to El Salvador uh, as a separate ticket. So that's the first step. Then there's... Um, code share agreements which basically is like that except for they now have the same flight numbers so it'll be like or they won't have the same numbers but they'll represent each other's flight numbers so they'll say like when we were in phuket colton and you were looking at the board and it changed the airline name even though it was yeah. going to the same place that was code share it was basically saying, even though it was Bangkok Airways, they code shared with somebody else that had a different, you know, rather than PG, they were JL or something. That would be JAL. I don't know if they actually code share with that. Anyway, that's not the point. That's, um, that's what Global Alliance does, right? Same thing. It's code share. So Global Alliance. I'm not familiar with Global Yeah. You, you mean like... You mean the Star United. Alliance. You mean Star Alliance. So United th Star that's Alliance. That's different. Sorry. That, so they don't necessarily, with their partners, have to co-share. So this is where I'm getting at. The alliances hmm. are actually a different level where they may or may not co-share. Most of the time, actually, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. But it's more about... God, I can't say that word. Reprosi reciprocity. Yeah, reciprocity of benefits so for instance this is where it means a lot more to me as the consumer i don't care about code shares as much uh because i know how to fly but for a lot of people they make a difference uh but for like my points so i can get points on any of the alaska partners and then use them on any of the partners too well, not necessarily use them, but I can acquire them on any of the partners. Um, and then also with the other side of that, rather than points, is like status. So if you have elite status in one world, 
it encompasses all of the airlines that are one world. So for instance, there's Alaska status, which is like MVP, MVP gold and MVP cold 75K, which gets you different benefits, which ties into if you're like an MVP gold, you're going to be a one world um, emerald. I forget the, the tiers, but there's ruby, emerald and sapphire. So the middle tier, so if you're an MVP, you are a one world ruby, which gets like you can use expedited lines at all the airports. So it, it's just kind of a different level of cooperation. And then there's what's called JV or joint ventures where two airlines agree like, hey, we're gonna share funding and we're also going to align our schedules. And that has to actually get approved by the government. For Which obvious, government? Through the FAA. Uh, you know, that's a good question. I would imagine it has to be with the government that they're operating in. So. Oh, so like the FEC making sure that they're not breaching antitrust laws kind of thing? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, I don't know if it... Yeah, I don't know if it's just the internet, like if it's just IATA or something. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. It has to be approved by a governing organization. I don't know which one. If it's the international, if it's like IATA, or if it's the local government of each airline. So uh, I'm not sure. I think it actually is the, it's not the international organization that it is actually the national organization of joint ventures. So anyway, Alaska is joining one of the three major alliances, which is One World which makes me happy because I live in Alaska. Therefore, I've, everybody who lives in Alaska pretty much just flies Alaska Airlines. And they've got a really That's good... That's all there really is up there, isn't it? Well, no. Actually, Delta flies up here. United flies up here. Um, there's actually... You can take uh, international flights to Iceland, to Reykjavik, directly from here, and to Frankfurt, directly from Anchorage. Ooh. Yeah, so you yeah, can get to sense. Europe... You can't get to Asia unless you're a box from Anchorage. Um, <laughs> it's actually during COVID. Eight months. It, yeah, during COVID, Anchorage was actually the busiest airport in the world for a little while because of the cargo flights. Uh, oh. Yeah. And then there, so there's One World, there's Star Alliance. So the big air airline for one world is most people know about american airlines uh star alliance is uh united and then sky team which is delta so those are the three major airlines uh alliances and they have partners throughout the world so that that's cool to me there's a few potential disadvantages i'm, I'm curious to see how this works so alaska's um the way that you get elite status is by miles flown rather than how much you spend. So if I find a really cheap flight from Anchorage to San Jose, Costa Rica, which I did one year, um, I can get a bunch of miles, even though it only cost me like you know $200 or something. It cost me more than that. But you can then get elite status really fast and really cheap by kind of gaming the system a little bit with that. Now, the other airlines, like Delta, United, and American, they do uh, a revenue-based elite status, which basically means you have to spend this much money. If you want, like, the equivalent of MVP in American, you have to spend, like, $3,000. And there's no short way around that. It's you spend that on tickets or on certain things of the airline and i know like taxes fuel surcharge doesn't count so we're kind of holding our breath to see if uh, that's if alaska is going to have to switch to that because they're switching to one world uh, the other part of that is will non one world partners that alaska has remain like singapore airlines the star alliance so i would assume that they're going to remain because they were just added last year and it took them like three years to add them uh, and then also Korean Air is Sky Team, so we'll see if they add it. Now the majority of Alaska's partners are One World, so you know it. It I think it's a net benefit, but we'll we'll see what's going to happen. 
Did, it, anyway. did they ever explain why? Uh, maybe maybe I missed it. Did they explain why they wanted to switch? Why they wanted to go into one world? Um, yeah, just a quick overview. I can Reasons? only I can only speculate. I I, I don't actually know. I haven't heard any speeches from okay. Alaska Airlines CEO <laughs> Normally, Fred Tilden. Do you, so in order for an airline to join a group, do they pay into the group, yes. or does yes. the group pay into them? They pay in. So there is a. Uh, I don't know if it's yearly or a monthly membership or whatever. fee. Basically, yeah, there is a membership fee, and they have to agree to a certain amount of reciprocity uh, between the other airlines. So, for instance, American Airlines Elite will be like you know who are One World Ruby or Sapphire or what's the Emerald will get certain benefits at Alaska Airlines. Like for instance, since I, I'm in lead. I can select like the exit row seats. So, for instance, they would be a, an American Airlines equivalent to that would be able to get those benefits. And I should also be able to get benefits with American Airlines. Like, for instance, since I should become whatever the mid tier is of it, I forget, I'll, I'll be able to get uh, certain lounge access with One World lounges, which means like American Airlines lounges, um, uh, JAL lounges, uh, now Cathay Pacific is another partner, BA, although there's weird rules in BA, uh, but I think American and BA were like the founders of One World, if I'm not mistaken. So BA kind of has some, some weirdness to it. Okay. But. For for the non travel folks, BA is British Airlines, right? British Airways. Airways. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I get too. I get too <laughs> acronymed and stuff after a while. British but alligators. British alligators. Are you, are you sure you want to fly with us? No, that's Spirit again. That's Spirit again. <laughs> Free alligator with every purchase of a seat. <laughs> But yeah, instead so, of instead of keeping the middle seat open, they just put an alligator in it. So that's how they keep enforcing apart. social distancing. It's forcing it by using nature. <laughs> Humans are the virus. Which again, by the way, social distancing on airplanes, to an extent, isn't going to be a thing, and it's not necessarily problematic because the air filtration system, mask usage, um, the airports are actually worse than the airplanes. As far as I believe we did an episode on that. Yeah, we we did. But I want to reiterate Uh. that. (laughs) Anyway, I'm taking up too much time, and I believe it's the next person of my hat and glasses crew to go. So, um, Brandon, the desolation update is fit for every man. I I have so many questions and like very few. I just realized what it was. I literally just realized what it was. Damn it. I knew that. I knew what it was. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So indie studio Hello Games has released update 2.60 for No Man's Sky. Oh, that's the the one with the thing. Man. (laughs) Yes. So uh, this update is called Desolation, and it gives you a little kind of teaser of what it is. Uh, this is the 12th free update to the game since its launch in 2016. Uh, it adds a decent amount of new features to the game, mostly centering around combat and adding some horror into the game. Uh, this update adds in derelict freighters with procedurally generated interiors. Uh, inside there's atmospheric dangers, deadly infestations, and plenty of loot to plunder. Uh, each freighter has a story that you can uncover by retrieving ship logs and personal effects. Uh, along with this update, they've added freighter customization, updated freighter inventory management, which is now accessible directly from the inventory screen, rather than having to go to each individual module. Um, uh, they've added in the ability to build teleporter modules into the freighter itself. There's improved combat Jesus. mechanics, new nexus missions, improved bloom effects, lens flare effects, lighting effects, a host of bug fixes. Um, I was able to download and play it a little bit before the uh, episode tonight. It It's a little creepy. I, I kind of want to experience it in VR because it is going to just be nightmare fuel a little bit 
Because um, if you want to, you, you know, defecate yourself, you want to do it in standing up in VR. Yeah. Yeah. Man, yeah, exactly. Man, Why is that... daddy scared? <laughs> <laughs> Why is daddy crying in the corner? So, Dude, that, Why is daddy that sleeping game, with the lights on? That I, game is such a freaking success story. I mean... Oh, yeah. Oh, it's, the, it's, it's amazing it, it is, how... It is a goddamn... Like, like this and then all of a sudden it, it just keeps winning it's winning man so this oh, yeah. this yeah, is i mean uh, this is the example of somebody saying you know what uh, we're gonna do this and they're actually doing what they said that they were going to do and actually going over the top although there's one thing in oh, what yeah. you said about the updates that you said this is like the 12th free update so what I, I want to know: Is there like DLC? What? No, 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 no. Okay. So I, I'm, I'm touting the fact that every update has been free. Okay. Uh, Sean Murray or Sean Murray. I, I don't know how it's pronounced because I've never actually heard it pronounced. I've only read Dumb. it. Um, he, he's the, he's basically the Chris Roberts <laughs> of this project. This is his baby. This is his company. Um, he has released all of this and i mean he easily could have you know done oh this is dlc for you know 5.99 or 9.99 or 19.99 or or whatever and uh nice transition <laughs> we tried we tried smooth, smooth. <laughs> so fucking smooth god damn it guys oh. professional podcasters right here <laughs> Years but yeah, I mean the the whole thing is that there was such a kerfuffle around the launch. There was a lot of if you followed the development of it and all the promises before it was launched, there was there was all this stuff promised and everybody said that you know none of the stuff that was promised was in there. It was a big flop initially on launch. Um I didn't follow the development. I did pick it up uh right after it launched just because i wanted to see i wanted to test it and see what it was like with having no information going into it and it was a fun game even you know 12 updates ago it was enjoyable it did have some issues and you know like like every game but the he you know the hello games team has just kind of continued to push out interesting updates adding vr support adding base building multiplayer i mean the, They're definitely showing I, I, the the love they have for their product, which in in video in oh, well, yeah. video games, computer games, whatever, you don't really see that a whole lot. Like putting mm. love into the yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, and that's the other great thing is there. There's not <laughs> microtransactions. There's not macro transact. There's no subscription. I mean, the only way they're getting new money is from people buying it on either for the first time or buying it on different platforms because it is available uh, through Steam, through Xbox, and uh, PlayStation. Um, so they're not, you know, like if it was a subscription model, they'd still be making money. There would be the assumption that they would continue to push updates and push DLC and stuff like that. And they're, they're not, but they're still continuing to make these insane improvements and no one saw saw this coming until there was a this weird two minute glitchy horror filled video uh on i believe it was twitter uh sean murray posted it on his twitter account and a couple hours later people were downloading you know a new update and looking for patch notes they didn't have the patch notes until i think half an hour after people started actually downloading it and playing around with it See? It was really interesting because it just popped up in my Reddit feed today and it's like, oh, I guess this is what I'm going to talk about because this is freaking interesting. And yeah, it, uh, it definitely news. adds. This is what it, happens. It definitely adds intrigue. This is why you should always under promise and over deliver rather than the opposite of that. It's yeah. like, yeah, yeah. Well, the Scotty effect. It's a lot of consumers and just, well, people in general are starting, especially with this COVID stuff going on, they're starting to see the, and it's been that way for a few years now, but like the E3 and all that shit, it's, it's basically a bunch of lies. 
it's a marketing campaign, but it's just it with what has been done with some of those stories of the past five or six years, it's dishonest marketing. So as you said, oh, yeah. you you under deliver or you under promise something and it ends up being better, then it's gonna be beloved. The Witcher series. Dark Souls. Portal. Stuff like that. Like Yeah. Yeah, less hype, more action. I mean, I think they were trying the the arg- the counter argument is well, you got to put yourself out there. You got to make yourself known. But it's better. Well, but to... even but No Man's Sky tried doing it the other way, where they mm-hmm. overpromised, they uh, they severely lied. underdelivered. Yeah, yeah. And it's well, yeah. One cool of the big redemption things... arc. Oh, absolutely. No, I and... will give them credit where credit is due, and they they deserve yeah. all due credit. And. Like I said, the hour that I played it today, I haven't picked it up in several months. I did play it a little bit on VR uh, just to see what it was like. I really enjoyed the VR experience, but at the time, my computer just could not handle it. Uh, I upgraded before RTX. Yeah, uh, now I've got RTX and Ryzen 7 and yeah, craziness, insanity. It runs really well in VR now. And I just hadn't really touched it. I've been focusing on other games, focusing on other things. So it was really interesting to hop back into it today. Not in VR, just standard 2D screen mode. And uh, it was a hell of a lot of fun. Like, I like I, I felt, like, the apprehension and the anxiety and the tension of, like, okay, what the hell is going to happen in this derelict vessel? Because, you know, the lighting changes and you've got you've got all the creepy sounds and just you're like okay what horror is gonna pop out around the corner oh god shoot it shoot it dead (laughs) and it just it was fun it was just it added a a different twist to the in-game universe i mean that's kind of been one of the things that's been missing is combat hasn't really felt super dynamic uh, it's like it's like if you had a game for four years that was minecraft and then suddenly, mm-hmm. over an update, turned into Doom 2004. <laughs> That's actually Not a quite <laughs> that bad, but yeah. It, in, in that vein where you're like, please, flashlight, please show me the horrors before they touch me. So it's more like, um, oh, fuck, what's that, what's that dead famous space? horror? Dead Space. Yeah, it's kind of like a Dead Space. Dead Space. Feeling? Uh, Maybe not to again, that extent. I don't... Like, where horror isn't the... It's not, it, but it's, that little area that little area is is intense i mean especially having played the game and you know up till now your biggest thing has been the the little like if you grab the eggs near abandoned outposts mm. the horrors spawn in but you can dig down underneath them and shoot them they're like there's known ways to handle them and it's it's Jump not like they just something. pop out randomly except for that first time um, and then sentinels and sentinels are you once you get to a certain spot in the game you just you deal with them and it's just part of it and they've they've done a whole new combat update so i haven't gotten to test ground combat on it or ship combat i don't think they've done anything to the ship combat in a few updates but they definitely did change like the damage rates of guns, the damage rates of sentinels, spawn rate of sentinels, <laughs> how quickly reinforcements come in. Um, I also noticed they changed the field of view. They kind of tighten the field of view when you're in combat and actually firing, which is kind of nice. I, I wasn't sure I was going to like that until I got into combat and realized, you know, you don't need to see the extraneous stuff on the side of your screen. You really that are kind of focused on, oh, shit, that. this thing is in front of me, die. Yeah, 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 it is it's yeah. the psychological tunnel vision effect, actually, in-game. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and it's done really well. I mean, everything that I saw in this update that they touched was just, it wasn't an afterthought, it wasn't a tack-on, it was just, it was very, very polished. The oh. only thing, I mean, everything is procedurally generated, so some of the log files like there's supposed to be this story of how this ship got there and what happened to the people but it doesn't 
doesn't always mesh because each log and each thing is procedurally generated. So you're like, okay, well, they did this over here and this over here, but how does that tie into where this ship is now and how the cargo it got exploded. into the state it got into? Part two. And they had dinner. Wait, what? That don't make no yeah. sense. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's it was some a lovely stuff time. Like that, but <laughs> I mean, if you just kind of, if you just kind of ignore that a little bit and go back to the combat and the, the, the that closed in like dark feeling and, you know, uh, the ship I was on had a super cold interior environment. So you have to run around and like find little heaters to activate so that you could like warm back up to move to the next area and plunder everything and having to go back out and store stuff into your ship and what were you saying that's something that's always really confused me in video games if you are in the dead cold of space and then you're suddenly in a colder environment your spacesuit's not good enough anymore i don't understand like is it because there's more matter actually wicking heat away from you at that point or like or Why? maybe because it's on, like, the interior it's of the vessel, chill. it's, it's, called it's hit chill. that negative, you know, that you know, there zero was, degree instead Kelvin. Of, or, instead of I don't zero know. Degree, instead of, like, two degrees Kelvin, it feels like half a degree Kelvin. I mean. So there was actually a good <laughs> description recently in a game that I played. So I don't know if it's scientific or not, but it's like Battle Tech, and a big part of that in any Mech Warrior game is heat management. And they were explaining how the moons are actually much worse for heat management than um, desert environments because the heat sinks actually need airflow around to actually them radiate to the actually air away. dissipate heat. So I don't know if the thermodynamics work that way. If you're a physicist, huh. I mean, if you're in space and in us. the sunlight, you're gonna heat up. I get that. Mm-hmm. And if you're in space and you're not in the sun. You are a big chunk of ice. So where 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 does the transition happen in a probably vented freighter to make you colder than if you were in just space? Well, and the thing is is each each interior is going to be procedurally different. So the one I was on was extreme cold. There's a chance that it's going to have extreme heat or extreme toxicity or radioactivity, you know, something like that. Uh, radioactivity. So it just, it's one of those roll of the gotta dice. Be a, it's got to be a feels like thing. Yeah. Yeah. Who knows? But I mean, it, you know. Yeah. It, all I know is it was, it was fun. I'm looking forward science. to it. It's like, just science. Yeah, without the science know. factor, what was the fun <laughs> factor just... there? And and yet, yeah. it, from your description, I want to update it and install it. And I've been pretty critical of No Man's Sky in the past. Uh, so, so to make I, me yeah. want to go back to I did not enjoy it. it in the hour point, 1.2 hours that I've put on Steam playing it. And half of that time was physically with you. And it just wasn't tripping any triggers. But... You know, if the four of us were to make a go of it, it might be entertaining for me. Yeah. Or I'm just a terrible be person to, to play No Man's Sky with. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's one of the issues that procedurally generated games have. The idea is you're supposed to make your own content when that takes work, and I don't want to. I want someone else to entertain me. Well, Feed me. Yeah, or, or it's the case. I'm bored. Of... Be, teach me. It, Everything's supposed to be unique, but it's not like in the uniqueness. It ends up being it, samey. Yeah, it creates bland. Like, look, you've got an alien with three horns over here and two legs over here. Oh, look, I went to another planet. Now the three horns are here and there's five legs right here. It's like, okay. Totally different species. Uh, yeah, rather than putting artistic work into it. Wh- which Beauty. Yeah, I think the, the best is when the games combine the two to create handcrafted environments in some variants of procedural generation. but Like Star, Star Citizen, Citizen, which is I a knew it. good I knew we were going to talk tie about in. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes. So since I'm doing game update, let's uh, do a quick, like, two-second overview of where Star Citizen's at right now. Be patient uh, is Alpha... the overview of that. Well... 
Yes. Not ready yet. Don't, don't back unless you... It's only eight you... more years. Yeah. In the famous yeah. words of Monty Python, get on with it! Get on with it! <laughs> well, but we're waiting. As, <laughs> as of recording today, uh, Alpha 3.10 is now in PTU available to Wave 1 backers. Okay. Uh, this update... pause, pause a second. I gotta, I gotta get angry for a second. Tell me the difference between 3.1 and 3.10. And don't tell me there's a zero after it, because that's bullshit. <laughs> they should be they... going to 4.0. They should be going well, to 4.0. From, from a developer standpoint, yeah. It, the, the decimal bugs me a little bit. It, it's not unprecedented, though. There have been other companies do the same thing. not in base 10, thing. though. It's... At it's least they don't revision. count. It's, yeah. Each each part represents a revision, and then obviously the big numbers represent a major revision. At, at least they're right. not. So if they count do, thirty that's... different damn mini revisions, mini patches. Okay, then, then they... three point nine point whatever, and just keep on going mm, there. That's not bad idea. But it's a bigger update than. It's so an internal... in the past, when they've done like a three dot eight dot one, it is a hot fix rather than a content patch. Uh, and also, yeah. so they felt they felt that they didn't want to go to a four until there's at least another system to travel to. I I think we can all be thankful that they based. don't count like Microsoft does. <laughs> Fair. Yes. Or, I know, can't argue yes. that. I can't argue yeah. that at all. Xbox One, Xbox Ten. No, Xbox or no. like EA Xbox. counts. It's like, what's the first Xbox? Is it the Xbox One? In no. Xbox. Is it the Xbox S? You are way wrong. Is it no, the Xbox. Xbox One S? Is it the XS? One X. The X- no, it's oh, just the X. Or is XS extra big? <laughs> That is one thing. I mean, we're not really big console players, but it's one thing PlayStation certainly has on. Oh Sony yeah, had, yeah. Certainly has what? on Microsoft. Hey, guess PlayStation, PlayStation two, coming out. three, which one's four, the original five. PlayStation? We can count here. Nintendo in Sony. two. So are we going to argue that kind the of. Japanese yeah, are yeah. smarter than us all because they can count? Sure. Yeah. Pretty much. Let's, I, let's go with that. From a marketing standpoint, we can't argue that, but. <laughs> it, that's a dumb question. Is Intel is Intel an American based company? Okay, well that proves the yeah, other side. I think so. But right but AMD is not is Asia, is it Japanese? I what thought, is AMD? I thought AMD was I, actually American too, but because originally they like the K processors were stood for kryptonite because if I remember correct this God, now I might be spewing nonsense, but I'm gonna spew it anyway, just like Facebook. Well, it's it's the only it's, reason I'm I'm mentioning is CPU processors and marketing naming, and we mentioned it last week. USB and mm. how... AMD. AMD is based in Santa Clara, California. Yeah, so it stood because the K, like they started with the and K so processors. Is Intel. So the K Where? stood for kryptonite for. Like, because it, if I remember correctly, it was X Intel employees that felt disenfranchised or something that created AMD and were, we're going to do the kryptonite, you know, for this proverbial Superman at the time. That was, if I remember correctly, only their headquarters are literally across the street from each other. Really? They're both in Santa Clara, California, and if I were to Google it right now, I'd be willing to bet. <laughs> That they are we're on just, the same just, goddamn street. Man, they we're must have throwing, some awesome throwing shit at water each other balloon and... fights. <laughs> just like <laughs> catapults and stuff. It's got to be drones. Oh, yeah. Guns and drones. Here's Skylink, motherfucker. Or I don't know. In my mind, in my mind, like that's how humanity works. Is everybody's like, let's build some processors. And they're all happy. And then they're like, all right. All right. Like 20 minute break. The Intel guys have done water balloon fight. They're escalating. Oh crap! It's a and that's thought. how the world works in my mind. That's... Oh, don't don't only. tell them, guys. It's close enough. <laughs> so much would be solved okay. if we could just throw a water balloons anytime we want. So that's why Song Cran also is tied with Halloween is the best holiday. 
Bring it so, around to Thailand. All right. Bringing, bringing the train back onto the rails. Star Citizen Alpha 3.10 PTU Wave 1 backers. Oh, yeah. That's what we were talking uh, about. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it adds quite a few new features, uh, including but not limited to the Grey Cat Rock Mining uh, ground vehicle, new FPS weapons, hangar, high-tech hangars, Grim Hex version 2, the first implementation of the player trading app, which I think is going to be huge, uh, improved turret usability, and an updated flight model to include atmospheric flight and thruster curves. That's okay. awesome! I, I and... now would like to apologize for interrupting you ten minutes ago. <laughs> now, yeah. yeah. <laughs> how, now, how long before all that shit actually works? I don't know. I have not <laughs> downloaded the PTU yet. Where all four of us can yet. play the game and Aug- play for August three hours 15th. without a single August problem. August 15th. You heard what? it here. That's that, our in right there. That, yeah, because it's a month away. I think it'll be sooner than that. Well, when you say no problems, do you actually mean <laughs> no problems, or do you mean no problems? <laughs> An acceptable yeah. amount of problems. If we're talking like no, no problems, we need to jump like two or three years into you the You mean <laughs> not falling through Grimhex through infinite space? Yeah, problems? so when, when, when <laughs> uh, uh, the entirety of the U.S. is willing to wear masks, that's when uh, it's never gonna it'll come be out. problem-free. Damn it. <laughs> Mm. I'll uninstall now. Snark. It's pointless. <laughs> Snark. I love it. Well. All right. Shit. Speaking of masks and uh, medical technology. That's quite a segue. To... I'm actually quite impressed. I'm already. I'm not, yeah. sorry to interrupt you. Well done, sir. We made up for well our, you know, <laughs> passing kerfuffle with that. So, Charlie, tell us how pharmaceutical companies don't have to rule the world if we don't let them. All right. So here's part one. I have to introduce myself properly. My name is Charlie Stifler. I'm a nationally registered paramedic in the United States. Uh, I've been practicing medicine as an EMT, EMT, intermediate, and paramedic for the last 15 years-ish. I've known You're old Brandon since 2006. You were my probie at one point. Right. And the Many years uh, ago. Padawan has become the master <clears throat> as so. you left the field and I have not yet. Uh, I therefore know Cody uh, about three months after that. And then sometime around 2013, I met Colton via online. I have actually still never face to face in person met Colton. When we I go on vacation. You're, you're, yeah. You're, yeah. As far as I know, you still don't physically exist in this world. You're still right. a computer-generated voice to me. Deep fake. And now you have a of face. He's I mean, a according fake. to that, he's a deep fake. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's an improvement, at least. <laughs> We're getting um, there. So, <laughs> that said, I'm I'm going to talk about a couple levels of pharmaceutical bullshit, and then my solution if I was emperor of the world. Uh, so, first things first. Um, the, do- the the things I'm going to be talking about are directly related to cardiac arrest and the drugs we use in cardiac arrest and why it's bullshit that we use the drugs we do. So one, the first drug we use in cardiac arrest is a drug called epinephrine. And the only reason why we use it is because a doctor in the 60s thought it was a good idea, and it stuck. <laughs> the theory... Wait behind epinephrine being utilized in cardiac arrest is because we want to vasoconstrict all of the blood from the rest of the body and shunt it to the core so we could perfuse and increase the blood pressure for the heart, the lungs, and the brain. Problem number one, the capillaries in the brain are small and vasoconstrict when you put adrenaline in them. So if you want the person to survive... Don't give them epinephrine. <laughs> but a dude one. in the 60s said it's a good idea. Okay. Five years ago, during the 2015 update to a certain organization that has three letters for an abbreviation, and I'm not going to name them directly because I don't want to get sued for libel, they said in their 2015 update that actually came out in the October of 2016 that their studies have not shown reliable improvement of the patient to hospital discharge. So in the patients that got epinephrine and the patients that didn't get epinephrine, there was no appreciable change to hospital discharge alive. So 
It literally said, eh, it doesn't work. But they went on to say that we're not going to do anything about it yet. And so part two <laughs> is that I'm theorizing in the 2020 update that we might come out in 2024 because pandemic. Uh, we will not see epinephrine in the cardiac arrest protocol anymore. That's, that's production number one. Okay. Now, pharmacological bullshit part two. There is another drug called amiodarin, which is a generic term for a drug. It is not the Codarone or the other names that are still under trademark. So I'm talking about the generic drug only, again, for liable purposes. The reason why it was introduced in 2005 as the only antidysrhythmic recommended was because of the single largest donation to that three-letter organization in that organization's history by that pharmaceutical company. And then magically, magically, yeah. amiodarone was the only drug to give in cardiac arrest for Money VTAC talks. or VFIP. Nobody walks. Okay? So, fast forward five years, and we're like, eh, it's okay. It's it's We're not really seeing like improvements in cardiac arrest outcomes. But it's okay. It still works. It's still saving the same people that the old drug would work. You know, it's fine. And then another five years goes by, and we're like, actually, we're seeing some complications. There is this really fun little side effect of, of amiodarin that it half-life of the medication in the body is six months. So... That would be fine shit. if there wasn't a toxic level oh, at which it God. would stop lung function. And that lung function's max dose is 150% of the dose we give in cardiac arrest. Oh, so it's shit. therapeutic window instead of being nice and big where the minimum amount to give it to a patient to see the effect we want and the maximum effect before we see half of our patients die – the window is actually like this, so it's not fantastic. And if you go into cardiac arrest a second time yeah, you within can't do six that. months, you can't do it again. Unless that family member who is hysterical because grandpa's dead again is telling the paramedic, don't give him amiodarin, he's already gotten it three months ago. Mm. I'm going to give him another 450 milligrams, and he is just going to be dead. Just. Irre- irrevocably gone. Okay. Is there an adult we could tell about this? This sounds terrible. <laughs> I wish there was an adult I could tell about this. Okay, I was told Holy about this shit. from an adult. Okay, so problem one, it fucking kills people. <laughs> problem two, there are four classes of antidysrhythmics and so I don't permanently look like an idiot on the internet, I'm going to read the four classes. So class one are sodium channel blockers, okay? So the sodium channel is what activates all of the cells in your body. Um, Basically, there's more sodium outside of the cell than there is potassium inside of the cell. And so when uh, sodium rushes in, potassium rushes out, depolarization happens, and whatever the function of that cell is, it does. If it's a brain cell, ooh, blue. Or if it's um, a spine cell, hey, I'm going to move my leg now. Like, so is this everything like you do, athletes, electrolytes, basically? Electrolytes are huge because if, okay. if you're sweating them or peeing them, then muscle contractions don't really happen mm. and coordination doesn't really huh. happen and okay. life kind of stops. Okay? Class two is calcium channels. So calcium channels are important. So you've, you've got the, the sodium, you've got the potassium, and then the calcium. Calcium makes sodium stronger and is responsible for muscle contraction. So you can have a a living being without calcium, but they will not move. So they will have thought, but no physical movement. Okay? Hmm. And then class – so that's class four. I I went from class one to class four. Class three is potassium channel blockers. So remember the in, out – and that's how depolarization happens. So if you block the in, that's one way. If you block the out, that's another way. If you block the calcium, the in's not so strong. And then class two is a beta blocker. So you have beta receptor sites that are basically 
speed, strength, and respiration rate. So it makes my heart rate go higher. It makes my respiratory rate go higher. A beta blocker will block that site and make it so your heart rate and respiratory rate don't go up. Okay? It's great for people with bl high blood pressure problems. It'll keep their heart rate low so it can't make them hypertensive. Hmm. Okay? Emiodorin, 60% of the time, is a class 3. That's what we want it to do. Th class 3. 60%. That seems low. Dose to drug. dose, that's, person that's a, to person. That's a D. The other 40% of the time is the other three categories, which in cardiac arrest, a sodium channel blocker is great. That would work no problem. Calcium channel, channel no problem. Potassium channel, no problem. Beta blocker? Beta blocker is terrible because then you're literally vasodilating all of their blood vessels, counteracting whatever hypothetical thing that epi is doing, and... When their heart starts, it won't be able to beat fast. Huh. So literally wow. counteracting the shock protective mechanisms so in the roll body. So roll a D20 to see if this is going to work correctly. And unfortunately, sure in, hope. in my experience, it's a crit fail almost every time. Uh, my first cardiac arrest, which I did run with Brandon over here, was a gentleman in a trailer park with a lit cigarette in his mouth. So we knew how long he had been on the ground. And this man was a dead ringer for my father, with the exception of the gigantic swastika right here. That's the only thing that was different between him and, him and my dad. It was dead ringer. It was creepy. And we gave lidocaine because that was the drug at the time. And then the next update was amiodarin. Now, in the 2015 to now update-ish, you may consider using lidocaine instead of amiodarin if you want. But they're not recommending it still because they still have that money in the bank and they don't want to, like, shut the door on huh. it in the future. So, gigantic fucking problems. If we're truly wanting to save lives, amiodarin's a terrible drug. Okay? Absolutely awful. Okay? So, that's why pharmaceutical companies shouldn't be trusted to make our lives better. Okay? Argument number one. Argument number two. There are drugs in... Uh, so I personally have multiple sclerosis. Uh, I am very fortunate that I have a very mild case. And un unless you're looking very closely at the blurriness on my right hand, you can't tell that I have a shake most of the time. We can play my Jenga. My speech gets slurred when I get really hot. Um, spatial awareness is kind of shitty when I get warm. That's why I'll never move to Tucson. Yeah, <laughs> there are exceptions to people getting used to it down here. We did establish that. Yeah. So um, there is an MS medication called ocrelizumab, okay? Oh, Ocrevis is the other name for it. That's the trademark name. Ocrelizumab is the new generic dra drug name. So I'm only going to talk about ocrelizumab, not ocrevis, okay? It is $100,000 a year. You take the drug once per year the medication is 50 milligrams in 100 cc's so if we were to translate grams to ounces it is an order of magnitude more expensive than gold hmm. okay it costs the pharmaceutical company nine dollars and 18 cents to manufacture it it was developed with public grant money and research money from a nonprofit and the U.S. government. In order to qualify for grants, more than 1 in 1,000 people have to have the disease you're trying to fix. So diabetes, 1 in 10. Okay? Uh, COPD, 1 in 20. Um, MS, 1 in 370 in the United States. Um, it was developed... Completely bankrolled by nonprofits and the government. And they are now turning around and charging people one third of the average home in the United States $100,000. There are reasons why I personally, as a line paramedic working on the streets in Denver, will never 
be able to afford the medication that'll save my life. Now, I am very, 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 very glad I have not had ocrelizumab because I personally have had a friend who passed away early spring this year from COVID because he was in contact with someone who had it one day after receiving this immune suppressing drug. Uh, yeah. Um, so that's the other reason if I, if I want to continue in my career path, I can never take any of the MS medications they've got because they'd make it so I would get sick like that and be dead like that. So, so it keeps your immune suppressed as long as it's actually working. Right. So okay. to kind of deep dive into MS for a second, MS is the inappropriate uh, allergic response to your own brain cells. So your own white matter and your own spinal cord. So it specifically targets muscle neurons. So what's absolutely terrible about having MS is that I will not be able to move at some point in my life, potentially if the disease runs its full course. I will be paralyzed. I'll be a quadriplegic. My mother-in-law can only move her right lower arm. That's it. But there will be no interruption into my pain receptors. So I will itch. And I will, I will feel that my, my fire, is, the, the leg is in the fire, but I will not be able to move the leg out of the fire. Hmm. So, Fuck. I didn't yeah, know that. disease-modifying okay. drugs right now are, there, there's 21 now. It's fantastic. There's, there's so much development happening. Um, 20 years ago, there was one disease-modifying drug. Now, now there's 21. That's fantastic. But when they're all a mortgage payment. Yeah. It doesn't matter. What the hell am I supposed to do? That's so, yeah. another example of healthcare in this country. Ocrelizumab in Canada is free. And it costs the national health system in UK, because I couldn't find the data of what Canada pays, but UK pays $1,100 a year for that medication, which is still 1,000 times more than what it costs to make it, which yeah. is fair. They deserve to make a little bit of money on it. They're a business. But it was but developed with grants. So, yeah. They, so they, they have yeah, no their skin and in the game. development is not 100% of it. Right. And the way these pharmaceutical companies work is not what is the miracle drug and cure disease. That is not their modality. Okay. There it's are how much can we make there. a profit? Right. There, they, there are researchers out there that are trying really hard to cure cancer and to find the PSCL1 pathway for, for all cancers so it just cancer erased. That would be great. The pharmaceutical companies probably aren't really interested in that because chemotherapy is a billion dollar a month. There's game. no money in curing people. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So I'm not one for nationalizing a lot of things, but healthcare and the companies that develop and make drugs – that's probably on the short list for me. So a one-payer healthcare system, great in my book. Um, talking about ambulance and, and doing my job. There was a time in my career, I am very fortunate now to work for a mom-and-pop ambulance company in Denver. We are big enough to do some really cool stuff. I'm one of the team paramedics for almost all of the sports teams in Denver, except for the Rockies, because – don't have the Coors Field contract, but literally every other sports team in Denver, I am a team paramedic for. Get to sit on the bench, get to sit on the sidelines, blast. But we are not corporate, so we get to feel the ebbs and flows and the pain of what is Medicare reimbursable. If, mm. if someone has Medicaid, we get $190 no matter what we did for them, period. So cardiac arrest, we're using $600 worth of equipment. My time apparently is worth $40 an hour on, in overtime. Uh, my EMT is 20 something dollars in overtime. And the ambulance, you know, gas, insurance, p car payment, all that stuff, we're worth $190 total. Insurance companies are going to do absolutely everything in their power to not pay that bill. So if I don't write this perfect, crystal clear report on why they should pay, then they're not gonna pay, and that's in their interest. We work under the guise that 30% of the people that we transport will pay 
the bill we send them, which is somewhere, depending on the service, between $500 and $2,000. 30% of people pay that bill. We're making money. We're okay. We'll, we can survive another year. If you nationalize health care and make it so every transport gets paid $500, the ones that cost us 300 to run, we're making money. And the ones that cost us 600 to run, we're losing money. But at the end of the day, everybody has a job. Everyone gets an ambulance when they need one. People are well cared for. Hopefully you're not using ambulances as their primary care physician because I have run a stub toenail this week. <laughs> I have run the I can't get out of bed and I have a bad cough. I have run the splinter in the toe. By the way, when you call in to the hospital to let them know you're coming, do not report a splinter in the toe <laughs> as a penetrating trauma to the lower extremity because then they'll get all the doctors ready. And when you mm. show up and it's a splinter, they don't find it funny. Who knew? <laughs> <laughs> Unless it's a telephone pole <laughs> through the knee. <laughs> it's, a, it's a baseball bat through the, through yeah. the foot. You know, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's a splinter. It's a splinter. So, it's fine. so a lot of what you're saying is it's for the average person gets really screwed by this system because they're not trying to either manipulate it uh, one way. The insurance companies are a f- – you know, they are a business, therefore they need to make a profit, which is problematic. But so here's the thing. The, you know, we can play the, whoa, the corporate entity needs to make money in order to have the entity in order to turn a profit. But when you're talking about a profit margin with billions and as an, as a industry across the whole wide trillions of dollars of profit, that magically disappear into zero taxes paid, that's the problem. Well, part of it is that all yeah. these pharmaceutical companies, insurance companies, they're cor- as, well, they're corporate. So their goal is to make as much money as possible for their stockholders. Instead of a, I don't want to say mom and pop insurance company because those don't exist, but <laughs> a small, a true company. They kind of do, but they usually sell insurance for larger companies. Right, I but, worked with one. Brokers. Yeah. 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 But a a more traditional company would I guess you could say their mission statement is to create a drug that helps with cancer in some way. They're but they're not paying so much extra money in terms of shareholders, they're just paying their employees hopefully a decent living wage or whatever they're worth. So all that extra profit, if there's any, it's well there wouldn't the the cost would go down. That's capitalism. As simple as that. And in it's uh, here. Here's an interesting example. I'll, I'll share a little personal story. Right now, I don't have insurance because of not having a a job that can do that. I recently lost one because of all this COVID stuff. It's 2020. This, yep. Yeah. Let's go. Let's bring it all back to 2020. I I had we had a scare in our house. One of our roommates was getting really sick, showing symptoms of COVID, like pretty pretty bad like we were pretty sure you had it so we were asked to go get a covid test but we could not find a a place in tucson to get it for free which according to leaders and what i remember it's the testing is supposed to be free you could argue about the treatment whatever that's a mm-hmm. whole nother fucking conversation but the testing was supposed to be free mm-hmm. i could not find it for free it's free if you have insurance it's free if you have a doctor's note, and you can only That's get a doctor's it. note with insurance. If you, but the issue hey. is, going with the, the pandemic concept, the, uh, the idea of testing is obviously supposed to, for contact tracing, to help isolate it and, well, remove it from the fucking population. But because you have to have a doctor's note, you're not going to go to the damn doctor, especially if you don't have insurance, unless you're fucking sick and dying, which means you've already fucking have it, and who knows who you've, tr- who you've sent it to. If if the roommate, by the way, I don't have it. He he tested negative, so. That's Although good. we could all assume that this is why you we- should wear a mask. Nobody really knows because of the testing. Exactly. So, so yeah, it cost it c- would have cost me and the girlfriend two hundred dollars each to find to get a test. 
when you don't have a job. When I don't have a when I don't have a decent paying job, or or anything, or yeah. So that's that's money gone for a five minute test that you could argue on the accuracy of and and whatever. Plus, with the backlog going on, it could be weeks, could be day. Well, I don't know about weeks, but multiple days before you find out if you have it, and who know and you could fucking die within that time period. It's it's. I mean, that's just a personal story for me with the healthcare system, the way it's set up now. I, if, and if he would, had tested positive, I would have had to get that test to be able to go work the part time job I have. Though, and I, that would have, that's the right thing to do because I don't want to spread it to other people. I don't want my community to suffer because that's the moral thing to do. I've got a story too that's so. A couple months ago, I think it was April or early May, um, I was in Alaska. We've got pretty decent tracking, and they expanded the conditions that you actually should go to see a doctor and get a test for. Uh, I am lucky enough to have a job where I have insurance, and so I went to, you know, inquire about getting a test. So just doing a Zoom meeting with a doctor, which Zoom, HIPAA, like, uh, that's a problem in itself. But anyway, so Zoom meeting with a doctor. I don't blame the doctors for the Zoom meeting because they need to do what they got to do. And getting the test still cost me, with insurance, $95. And the test, yeah, that's not free. (laughs) <laughs> and the tests are not that bad. I just want to specify this. Uh, it came out negative, but the test was like, you know, somebody fully suited walks up to your car, sticks this thing in your nose, and by the time it is completed, its insertion in your nose, she is pulling it back out again. So it's not a stick it, leave it. It's a whoop, whoop, basically. And it's not that bad. It feels no. very awkward. Not, I wouldn't say painful. I would just say awkward because you don't believe... normally stick stuff that far in your nose. Yeah, Charlie normally when someone's probably, that Charlie far could probably inside attest... of you, they've bought you dinner. Yeah, and Char- yeah, Charlie could probably attest to saying that having the disease is arguably arguably worse than sticking a oh, cotton yeah. blob up your nose for a couple seconds. I mean. I don't I mean, think anyone could argue that. <laughs> the best the best part about this disease, which is a horrific continuum to actually have to justify, is that the people who are dying from this are sedated and on a ventilator. They are not mm. suffering. That is the only great thing about this disease and how it kills people. Is that they're not going to be awake and suffering when they're dying. That's it. That's the only good thing. Unless we hit Italy, you know, the... Not Italy's numbers, but the percentage of infected people per medical staff and per ventilator where people aren't getting ventilated. I would argue that we could sedate people that are suffering to the point where they are not suffering. Gotcha. Managed pain, basically. Pain management, hospice care kind of thing. Which the, uh, that's a that's yeah. another rant for another day. That's all that's a whole <laughs> can of I do we are want... definitely going to have to have you back on the show there, Charlie, yeah. so we could discuss and I, I rant add... about the oh, freaking yeah. healthcare system. Yeah, I want to add one thing that's kind of general about the healthcare system here. I have experienced the healthcare system overseas, as has Seeker. Um, this isn't even Canada or the UK. This was in Thailand. I went to probably the best hospital in Thailand the most expensive hospital in Thailand. Um, It was issues with, we had fires around Alaska before I got on flights where I flew on several long haul aircraft. Um, And the most wonderful sinus infections of the world follow. (laughs) Yeah. So uh, a few days into my trip, start feeling a little bit bad, go to, I first call the hospital in Bangkok, uh, Boomingrad is the name of the hospital, by the way. And they give me an appointment. I thought it was an appointment for the same day because I have had experience with that before. They give it 
to me. Next day, I misinterpret it, go later that day to the hospital. They apologize to me because it's actually the next day. Then they tell me not to leave because I can get in that day. And then they go, oh, it'll be about an hour. 20 minutes later, I am seeing an ENT, which is a specialist, not a... Yep. 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 I, I had the Auto base. laryngologist. I mean, it, yeah. So I see an ENT. He's like, okay, I want to be sure this is what I think it is. We're getting x-rays. So I'm like, okay, well, maybe this will be tomorrow. Nope. Immediately, the radiologist goes, walks me on the same floor to the other side of this immaculate, spotless, hotel-looking hospital to the x-ray, get the x-ray done. It's not even five minutes in between these two things. Get the x-ray done, go back out. It's about 10 minutes later, go back to see the doctor, and he says, yep, because of this, this, and this, you have a sinus infection. Here's what I need you to take. Here's what we're going to do. So go out, get the medication, pay for same day, seeing a specialist, most expensive, 6,000, like 100 baht, the equivalent of 200 US dollars. I could have gotten that cheaper by going to a different hospital, which I would have gotten the same. It wouldn't have been as nice looking, but it would have been the same quality of care. And I could have gotten it cheaper by having the meds rather than getting the meds at the hospital, getting them deferred to the little like 7-Eleven style pharmacies they have everywhere in Thailand. So arguably that's some of the most that I could have paid and it was just a little bit over $200 for that kind of service, yeah. which is way better than the service I would have gotten in the U.S., which I probably would have had multiple checkups. The first one would have been, you know, we'll see you maybe the same day, but probably later by a general practitioner. And, oh, you know, call us if you're feeling better if several days later rather than here's what we think it is. Now, granted, they are... They will give you antibiotics quickly there, which is that can be negative. That, uh, that's another that's another conversation. In itself yeah, too. yeah, no that and <laughs> but my point is is that interaction would have probably cost me over a thousand dollars in the U.S. Oh, easy. At, I, not even not a thousand dollars without breaking yeah. a sweat. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, like and I so, and I had a very similar experience. Uh, when I went to Thailand, and it would maybe a total of three hours. We we had fun driving to the yeah we had fun yeah so we went granted, to a different we hospital for fun yeah we were, but it's the same same basic thing. Went in, didn't call, didn't I didn't even have to call. I literally just <laughs> went in there, and within heck twenty minutes, I was seen by a specialist. You had a translator. Uh, you're right, with a translator, with a goddamn translator. Like, what the hell is that? They knew I spoke English, so and he, and that translator stayed with me through the entire fucking process. Now this is on the outskirts that, of Bangkok, so really, mostly Thai speaking, not very much a, as much English as central Bangkok. But, where I said, but the idea still stands. I mean, yes, it it was a, it was probably a more expensive one. Would you? It was probably more expensive, but it's still the whole process. With that level of service, with that level of care, with that, they were they were generally they generally wanted me to feel better. I saw a specialist in in his office, and he explained to me what was what he thought it was, what it probably was with the test and everything. Got to the pharmacy, I paid eighty dollars for the whole goddamn thing. Granted, this is eighty dollars American, but it cost. Yep, that blew my goddamn mind. And Jesus. it's still the best experience. I and as Cody stated, it was almost fun going to the damn doctor to see the hospitals were clean they were nice i could go to clean. starbucks people, and the lobby were, like it's it, it was honestly if, if, we, if that experience could be experienced by everybody i would argue in the united states they would not stand for anything how they're treated with the current system i mean yeah. and it yeah, is what it is so, but still so as a counterpoint to you guys's experience a uh, couple months back, so I was working on, you can just barely see it behind me, 
I was working on my 1940s cl metal clarinet. Haven't had a tetanus shot in, well, probably since my son's been born, which he's turning 11 the end of this month. Uh, yeah, yeah. Stab myself in Weird the thumb with one of the rusty mm -hmm. springs. Yeah. Stab myself in the thumb with one of the rusty springs. Didn't think about it for a couple of days. Woke up with just terrible jaw pain. And I was like... Uh -oh. Okay, I'm probably just this. <laughs> these two are probably not correlated. Let's oh, let's be honest. Brandon. But Brandon, just just in case, just in case, you are the worst the patient office. in the world. Oh, totally, totally. Uh, call the doctor's office. Say, hey, here are my symptoms: like terrible jaw pain, migraine, like just it's terrible. But you know. As some extra information, this happened, you know, a few days ago. I don't, I don't think it's that, but I, I just want to make sure. And of course, they freak out because they're like, "Well, uh, you haven't had a tetanus shot in at least eleven years, and it's something from the nineteen forties and rusty, so you're going to go to the hospital." So ER visit, because they would not let me in the clinic to just look at me there had to have a chest x-ray to make sure that I didn't have anything going on with my lungs and didn't see a specialist saw just the general ER doc who did some basic blood tests I have insurance I'm currently on furlough from a company that has really good insurance but because a ER visit and a same-day chest x-ray and same-day blood work, I currently owe the hospital, after insurance, $2,700. Like, I... that You could have flown to Thailand! You could have flown to Thailand, yep. gotten treated for tetanus, and flown back, and flown back for less. On business yeah. fucking... On and only just in stayed in a five star hotel. Mm. Like, yeah. So, just the tetanus shot after insurance was a few hundred dollars because See, it uh, had to be administered in the ER and it wasn't a. Uh, if I would have scheduled it and it would have been preventative, my insurance would have picked up the tab, all of the tab for the vaccination. So you should have because not because it was stabbed. in ER same day. Oh, Jesus, I shouldn't have mentioned anything and just been like, "Hey, I need a tetanus shot." But, yeah, but I was trying to be responsible with my family and get tested for something that could have been major, and it turned out to be, oh, uh, yeah, your wisdom tooth's trying to come in. Go see a dentist. Oh my God. So, and how yeah. much per month do you pay in premiums and, to your medic to your insurance? Uh, are, do we want to include the amount that my company pays? We'll we'll just say yours for I, only mine. Okay, uh, I pay with dental, vision, and then the pre the actual health insurance premium probably in the neighborhood of six hundred a month. Okay, Jesus. so this is this oh, is a one minute, my God. one minute that I'm going to address this, and it's going to be a rant sometime other later than this. But <laughs> if the insurance costs more than what you would pay in taxes to have a nationalized health insurance, you're saving money. Plus, that twenty-seven hundred dollar bill would just be zero dollars. You you would go you could go to the hospital without a wallet. They would say, oh. Brandon. Hi, Brandon. Here's a tetanus shot. By the way, you should go see a dentist. We cover that too, but you should go see a dentist. Don't worry about it. Have a great day. Instead well, of, think it here, we need your firstborn child and a deposit. So you, you add in the yeah. fact that, I mean, yeah, it was just a little stab with a, with a piece of metal. You probably wouldn't have even thought about it at the time. But if it didn't cost so goddamn much to go to the doctor you probably been like i might want to go get a tetanus shot because i haven't had a tetanus shot 
like your your mm-hmm. mentality about your health would freaking change. You wouldn't oh, think yeah. about your financial oh, yeah. side. Yeah, because you the would cost think about of... I could fucking I haven't had a tetanus shot. That's a rusty piece of metal. Might be a good idea. Hey, let me and then you have the experience like counterpoint like to said. that. Hey, hey. Just little counterpoint. Uh, People are mm. still going to be in denial about their medical conditions. Right. And but, him being a previous medical provider is is already <laughs> elevating him into a terrible category of, oh, I'm sorry, son, because daddy's a paramedic, we will never go to the hospital until you're dying. Okay, right. I would but, I would actually like to say that in Bangkok, I know that the medical costs were fairly cheap in Thailand, so I probably would have let my issue slide my sinus infection slide until it got much worse if i was in the u.s oh absolutely i mean i would have like little little things like that blow out of proportion and then cost even more money that's like i've had experiences where older people frick like work at a used to work at a kroger in gunnison city market whatever the heck their version is (laughs) i'll i'll call it out screw that place they (laughs) i had i worked with a sweet old lady just has been there for 40 goddamn years, like just forever. Sweet old lady, nice to everybody. Every, she knows everyone's name. Everyone knows her damn name, blah, 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 whatever. You know, small town shit. She fucking fainted on the goddamn job. She fainted, just didn't know what ca- what caused it. And I, and luckily the hospital is literally right behind the, the store in, in Gunnison. So it wasn't a huge deal. So I ended up driving her over there. But the first fucking thing she said to me is, will my insurance cover it? Like, and I, that to this day still haunts me. And she wasn't going to die. She wasn't in that much danger. But the fact that in her mindset, mm-hmm. can I afford this? It, am I actually sick enough? And the and financial there's, danger there's is another, worse than the medical danger. And yeah, that absolutely, yeah, that is morally wrong. I mean, I don't think anyone here can argue that. And, and- What's it's a very complicated issue, but that's one time you've heard that. I I don't even want to speak to for Brandon and see how many times he's done it uh, over his years in the career. But fifteen years in, basically for me now, I it would take it breaks your, hours to remember all it breaks your of fucking the people heart. that have said those exact words to me and have ultimately made a decision that could potentially cost them their lives or 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 long term health because they can't afford the hospital. Well, oh, yeah. We... The amount of refusals that have been signed because, well, my insurance isn't going to pick this up or I don't have insurance or I can't afford this. Yeah, it's definitely yeah. we're definitely going to have to talk about it in a future episode because, yep. I mean, it it's obviously affects every one of us as Americans and all of our people in our community, people at health. COVID, with COVID, it affects people all over the world. It's why yeah. we're not allowed to travel anywhere. So People who are traveling to the U.S. too? I it's it's definitely yeah. a major issue, and we could spend, as Charlie said, we could spend probably an entire not. episode just on healthcare. Yeah. We could spend we could make yeah. there are entire podcasts about this, just this concept. Well, so it's, well yeah, we'll have to we'll keep have it. To talk about it some, next time. Yeah, we'll we'll have to time. space the medical issues out a little bit <laughs> over with other <laughs> right. stuff. So I mean, we, no, no, uh, no, no I, I appreciate your expertise because I would say that you're the first person that we could have on that was actually, you know, and has expertise on this subject. So <laughs> thank you. Woo, we got our first expert. <laughs> so careful. Well, guys, careful. Do, do we want to? Yeah. OK. <laughs> Very long. By episode, legal definition, he's a person. <laughs> he can only provide information. Whatever. He can only provide information. I am a private citizen. Yeah. With a profession that might lend itself to some knowledge. Yes, and this is all of yep. opinion, of yep. course. So, like this, because we live super... in a litigious society. Yay! That's great. <laughs> all right, all right. Rant over. All right. So, yeah. super long episode. Do we want to plug our our relative stuff real quick before we say goodbye? Absolutely. So, again, I am Brandon Vader. You can find me on uh, Twitch as Drac Vader. I will be starting up a Facebook gaming page uh, hopefully soon. I just got some new branding. Um, you can also see thetechpirate.net uh, for some reviews, tech commentary. I should have some reviews of the uh, Surface Microsoft Surface earbuds coming up. Uh, so far, they've they've surprised me. Not only so, are they stylish, they sound good too. Yeah, <laughs> and. No wires. 
Cody? Uh, I am Cody Stratman. I exist here uh, on this fateful planet. Uh, you can find me on YouTube at Striving to Fail. Um, yeah, I I do stuff. I play games. I should probably stream more on Twitch. Um, yeah, I'll probably be playing No Man's Sky because that and that Star Citizen update sounded really awesome, but I'm not going to play a t PTU build right now. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Um, thank you, everyone. Anyway... Oh, do uh, I not get to plug anything? No, you you guys do. Secret I was go. thanking them specifically. <laughs> no. No. Making us look bad. Thanks. Uh, that, was, that came back around on me. I am Colton <laughs> Rover. Go under the uh, gamer tag and everything of Seeker4761. That's uh, the amount of people in his harem. I'm Fuck. trying to increase that number constantly. <laughs> the dude... Don't tell the girlfriend. Anyways. <laughs> uh, I'll say something that nice is totally, That is totally going to be a bit now, isn't it, Psycho? <laughs> Cody. I do stream on Twitch um, under the same name, uh, twitch.tv slash seeker4761. I also have a YouTube channel. I also have a Facebook gaming page as well. Just so much crap. And I'm also a contributor on the techpirate.net. Hopefully... Uh, some more content will go up soon, and uh, cool. That's that's me. That's my internet life. Uh, All right, Mjolnir. Pretty, pretty and then I am oh, Charlie sorry, Stifler. Still... Yes, that's really my last name, by the way. I'm not going to go into <laughs> that this time. Uh, my gamer tag is Milnor, <laughs> and I don't stream right now, and I don't YouTube right now, but I have a feeling I might start soon. Uh, I'm going to be kind of busy for the next couple weeks might be having a baby in the next, I don't know, the next 14 days or something like that, or rather my wife is. Um, babies. Babies. That's probably So I have a feeling my next topic you. will be <laughs> being a father in my mid-30s again. And then, uh, yeah. So, till next time, guys. Thanks for the invite. No yeah, problem. you're always welcome yeah. on the Thanks for on joining the, uh, us. Yeah, always welcome, man. Good, good, yeah. good show. Uh, hey, play us out, Dracanis. Mm. All right, everyone. Thanks again for joining us. We'll see you on the next one. Bye, everyone.